Hi guys, this is Rudy coming at you live from uh, West Palm Beach in Florida. Uh, you know what we're going to do tonight is take a little trip down uh, memory lane. And uh, well, I guess it depends on how old you are, but many of us are old enough anyway to remember the uh, collapse of the US housing market in, in 2006. In that time of, you know, um, upheaval during 2006, 7, 8, 9, etc. And the ensuing financial crisis that wreaked havoc across the United States and across the world. You know, financial crises, unfortunately, are quite common. And historically, they have caused economic tsunamis that have devastated economies, uh, pretty much crushed any affected economy. I've compiled a brief overview of five of the most devastating financial meltdowns. Now, what I want you to do is watch and then let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think any of the uh, other things that I might not have covered uh, compare? Uh, let me know then share your comments. I look forward to chatting with you. Kicking it off with number five, the financial crisis of 2007, 2008. This sparked the Great Recession, the most severe financial crisis since the Great Depression, and it wreaked havoc in financial markets around the world. Triggered by the collapse of the housing bubble in the United States, the crisis resulted in the collapse of Lehman Brothers one of the biggest investment banks in the world at the time. It brought many key financial institutions and businesses to the brink of collapse and required government bailouts of unprecedented proportions. It took almost a decade for things to return to normal. In the meanwhile, wiping away millions of jobs and billions of dollars of income along the way. Number four. The Asian crisis of 1997. This crisis originated in Thailand in 1997 and quickly spread to the rest of East Asia and its trading partners. Speculative capital flows from developed countries to the East Asian economies of Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and South Korea, known collectively then as the Asian Tigers, had triggered an era of optimism that resulted in an overextension of credit and too much debt accumulation in those economies. In 1997, in July, the Thai government had to abandon its fixed exchange rate against the US dollar that it had maintained for so long, citing a lack of foreign currency resources. That started a wave of panic across Asian financial markets and quickly led to the widespread reversal of billions of dollars of foreign investment. As the panic unfurled in these markets, and investors grew wary of possible bankruptcies of East Asian governments, fears of a worldwide financial meltdown began to spread. It took years for things to return to normal. The International Monetary Fund had to step in to create bailout packages for the most affected economies to help out those countries and help them to avoid default. Counting down to number three, the OPEC oil price shock of 1973. This crisis began when OPEC, which is the organization of the petroleum exporting countries, their member countries, primarily consisting of Arab nations, decided to retaliate against the United States in response to its sending arms supplies to Israel during the fourth Arab-Israeli war. OPEC countries declared an oil embargo, abruptly halting oil exports to the United States and its allies. This caused major oil shortages and a severe spike in oil crisis that led to an economic crisis in the United States and many other developed countries. What was unique about the ensuing crisis was the simultaneous occurrence of a very high inflation triggered by the spike in energy prices and economic stagnation due to that economic crisis. As a result, economists named the era a period of stagflation, stagnation plus inflation and it took several years for output to recover and inflation to fall to its pre-crisis levels. Countdown to number two, the Great Depression of 1929 to 1939. I bet some of you may have thought this would come in at number one, but this was in fact the worst financial and economic disaster of the 20th century. Many believe that the Great Depression was triggered by the Wall Street crash of 1929 and later exacerbated by the poor policy decisions of the US government. The depression lasted almost 10 years and resulted in massive loss of income, 
record unemployment rates and output loss, especially in industrialized nations. In the United States, the unemployment rate hit almost 25% at the peak of the crisis in 1933. It's number one, the credit crisis of 1772. This crisis originated in London and quickly spread to the rest of Europe. By the mid 1760s, the British Empire had accumulated an enormous amount of wealth through its colonial possessions and trade. This created an aura of over optimism and a period of rapid credit expansion by many British banks. The hype ended abruptly on June the 8th, 1772, when Alexander Fordyce, one of the partners of the British banking house Neil, James, Fordyce and Down, fled to France to escape his debt repayments. The news quickly spread and triggered a banking panic in England as creditors began to form long lines in front of British banks to demand instant cash withdrawals. The ensuing crisis rapidly spread to Scotland, then the Netherlands, then other parts of Europe, and then to the British American colonies. Historians have claimed that the economic repercussions of this crisis were one of the major contributing factors to the Boston Tea Party protests and the American Revolution. So there you have it, guys. That's my uh, my top five. Um, if you've watched this far, maybe uh, what you can do is let me know in the comments what you think. Um, uh, how do some of the things that you thought might uh, make my top five compare, like um, the uh, 2000 dot com boom bust, uh, maybe the uh, COVID pandemic of 2020, uh, Black uh, Black Monday. You know, there, there are a number of different financial crises depending on your age that you might have experienced personally, including obviously last year's um, 2020 flash meltdown uh, for a couple of months before we started showing some recovery. Anyway, let me know in the comments as usual what you think, and uh, I look forward to connecting and chatting with you. So thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Rudy saying goodbye for now. Come and get